Now, I don't ordinarily do this, but I'm going to play a video here that I think every serious Bible-believing Christian needs to watch. It's about a year old, and so the technology they're using here has no doubt been updated to be even more powerful by now. This video is just four and a half minutes long, and so I hope you watch it to the end. Check this out. Whether you're here, 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 or at one of these, it doesn't matter. This can find you. The common name, Stingray, technically a cell site simulator. First developed for military use, it's made its way into local law enforcement. It can track a person down to the room they're in if they have their cell phone on them. Stingrays turn these into homing devices. And that's just the beginning. These are tracking devices. This is emitting a signal. This is GPS. Mike Mino with the North Carolina branch of the ACLU has been watching the spread of stingrays for years. It's my understanding that the software that a lot of these devices use is capable of capturing things like your text messages, the numbers you're calling and receiving calls from. We know for sure they're getting people's location. Here's how it works. Cell phones are always trying to connect to nearby cell towers. A stingray acts like a cell tower decoy. In what's called a man-in-the-middle attack, it tricks cell phones into thinking it's the nearest cell tower, phones connect to the stingray, and police can access a range of personal information. But they don't just get intel on one phone. Every phone nearby is forced to divert to the stingray. Calls are passed on to a real cell tower, data scooped up stays with police. When you ask them why they're using it, they'll say, well, we're targeting certain individuals, but the nature of the technology is so expansive that you cannot use this without countless innocent people having their data captured as well. The I-Team has learned at least three law enforcement agencies in the Triangle have been using cell site simulators, but they don't like to talk about it and may not be allowed to. These two purchase orders show Raleigh and Durham police bought variations of the Stingray within the last 10 years. Raleigh's purchase order, obtained by the I-Team two years ago, shows the department paid more than $120,000 for the device. Separate documents obtained by the ACLU show Durham spent nearly twice that. In spite of those purchase orders, both departments claimed not to be using one. When the I-Team asked recently, Raleigh says they stopped using theirs because of outdated technology. With the Stingray, though, secrecy is part of the deal. Durham's contract with the device's manufacturer includes a strict non-disclosure clause, not just about the Stingray, but about the agreement itself and its subject matter. There is such secrecy around this, and I think it's because it's so powerful. I have a cell site simulator, and um, we do use it. Wake Sheriff Donnie Harrison is the only current law enforcement officer we could find here or elsewhere willing to talk even a little about the device and how it's used. It's a very useful tool that we use, uh, not only for the bad guys, uh, but for looking people that are lost, looking people that uh, say they're going to commit suicide. Sometimes we have used them uh, for children that's missing that have uh, phones. and. Um, Basically, that's all about, about all I'm going to say about it. Harrison told us Wake County has had a cell site simulator since 2008. He insists they're always within the law and always get a warrant first. But there's very little public documentation of those warrants or of the use of stingrays in general here or in any of the cities in which we looked. But no, we don't like to talk about it. Uh, you know, when a general goes in battle, he doesn't uh, give out his battle plans. It's the classic question. Safety or privacy? Law enforcement will tell you these things get bad guys off the street and help good people out in the meantime. Critics say we just don't know, and we don't, by design. As long as we do it lawfully, uh, I don't care what people say. Uh, my job is to keep people safe. The public needs to know more. I think this is something that the courts need to know more about. Um, there are real questions about whether a technology that soaks up innocent people's data can be used uh, constitutionally. And so there you have it. And yes, what he just said is one of the main reasons the U.S. Constitution is going to be changed very soon. In fact, I did two videos on this years ago. The fact they keep talking about how the Constitution seems outdated in the news almost daily now confirms this, hands down. Students of prophecy have known for years why this is going to happen. And if you remember what the sheriff just said, 
They've had this technology for over 10 years. But there's two main reasons that the U.S. Constitution has to change for them to continue using this stuff. Number one, well, they can't use this kind of technology that tracks people like this without changing the Constitution. And number two, they cannot enforce the mark of the beast with the present Constitution either. Now do you see why all cell phones are designed to be addictive as well as an absolute necessity in the lives of most people? If you can't be without your phone, then you can't expect any real private security. When the time comes to enforce the mark, if you can't get rid of your phone by then, you are going to be that much easier to track down. Thank you for watching. God bless.